What's up, internetpreneurs? This is John Collins Palmer from uh, OnlineLibertyLifestyle.com. So that says Family Dental Care right behind me. I'm talking a little weird because I got some cavities filled just now. <laughs> my tongue is numb. So is the right, entire right side of my mouth. Uh, so <laughs> this is going to be a little bit of a different uh, kind of video. I swear I'm not drunk, officer. It's just cavity fillings. <laughs> All right, so in today's video, I want to talk about uh, change, how you can adapt to it, how you can cope with big changes in your life. And, uh, you know, sometimes people, well, generally people are very uh, afraid of change. You know, whether you're deciding to quit your job or, you know, pursue some kind of side business so that you can eventually quit your job or even switch careers. You know, some people <laughs> switch careers, they go back to college at like 30, 40, 50 even. I had uh, a 56 year old in one of my college classes once and I'm like, why are you even here dude? <laughs> like, <laughs> this is not worth it at that point I think. But, you know, some of the major changes that I've made in my life, I uh, graduated <clears throat> with a uh, BA, Bachelor's of Arts in English with a minor in Spanish and then I had no idea what I wanted to do when I graduated so I went straight into grad school and uh, from there you know English teacher with a Spanish minor I always figured that I would just be a teacher you know so <laughs> right after graduating I went straight into grad school and I got a master's uh, in curriculum instruction, so it's a master's in education. I'm like, yes, I'm definitely gonna do this teaching thing, right? Well, while I was doing my master's, I actually uh, got a job as a substitute teacher at uh, a high school. I tried, you know, the middle school and the elementary school and everything as well, so I got my feet wet, got some real-world experience, and then they offered me a long-term subposition as a Spanish teacher at the high school. So, I did that, and <laughs> the experience was, I don't know, subpar, you know? Uh, you know, God bless teachers. Like, they really do have the patience of saints, and uh, the best teachers, you know, really do affect and inspire their students in ways that last a lifetime. But for the most part, teaching is a really tough gig, you know? Um, you got to deal with unruly students. You've got to deal sometimes with negligent parents, parents who don't care. You know, I had that. I had to do uh, parent-teacher conferences, and I would call every single, every single parent of every single student. You know, I had like 160 students, and <laughs> uh, you know, some of them wouldn't pick up at all. Some of them didn't leave any contact info. Uh, some of them just literally did not care. You know, I was told that that. <laughs> they didn't care how their uh, child did. So that was that was really discouraging. So you gotta sometimes deal with really unruly students who do care nothing about the subject you're teaching because they didn't choose the subject and they find it irrelevant. And you know, sometimes <laughs> it really is irrelevant. You know, not everybody wants to become an engineer. So does any does everybody really need to know the, the quadratic equation? You know, <laughs> I can relate to the pain of these students and why they're so unruly. And, you know, it's sad when you hear about parents that don't care. And then you have administration who, you know, schools are, are a business, essentially. They, they get funding from the government, but they have standards that they have to meet. And a lot of the times, these schools don't care about the students. They just want them to pass the standardized testing. They just want them to be present in the schools so that they can continue to receive that funding. When I was a teacher and I went to, uh, you know, after school meetings and stuff like that, they told me that, you know, make sure you do your attendance, your roll sheet properly, because, you know, if we're not gonna get funding if we don't have a certain amount of students that are present. So, I was really discouraged by that. You know, I went to, uh, you know, a pretty rough school. We had like a 50% teacher turnover rate um, so, it's a rough school, but, you know, just 
having that real world experience of actually being a teacher in a long term position made me realize that you know the only way to really know if something is for you is to actually go out and do it and get real world experience not to get another degree in it because you know I got my degree in English and Spanish then I went back for masters in education and when I actually became a teacher is when I realized that this this isn't for me so you know my mind was I can take my degrees and force myself to become a teacher because those are the that's the degree that I have um, but that's a terrible mindset to have because I'm limiting myself I'm limiting my capacity and my abilities uh, simply because I have this tool, which is a degree. Okay? Well, <laughs> I'm not going to live out the rest of my life, the next 30, 35, 40 years, working at something that I know that I'm not as passionate about as business and entrepreneurship if, <laughs> if I'm not passionate about it. Like, that would be a complete and huge disservice to myself and my students and my coworkers. And, uh, you know, some people are great teachers, and, you know, I aspire to be a teacher myself. But the thing is, I wasn't passionate about teaching Spanish, which was the subject that I was teaching. It just, it's important. It is, but business, learning how to actually uh, take care of your checkbook, learning how to invest, learning how to pay your taxes, these are the things that we should be teaching in schools. Um, you know, stock trading, investing, in real estate, affiliate marketing, like things that actually are practical that can make you money and help you support yourself. That's the kind of things that I'm, lear I'm interested in learning about and interested in teaching. So that was the biggest huge change in my life was receiving this, you know, master's degree in uh, education and then immediately after graduating decided that it wasn't for me. I'm not a quitter, that's why I didn't, you know, drop out, but at the same time, you know, I'm not going to limit myself to being a teacher just because I have that degree, just because I have that tool. Does that make sense? So if you really want a change, like in your heart of hearts, you know that what you're doing right now isn't what you should be doing, and you're just doing it to be busy, you're just doing it to, you know, keep up with your friends on Facebook. You're just doing it because that's what your degree is in, or you're just doing it because you just need the money. Like, you're just going to be unhappy. You're not being true to yourself. You're not living the life that you really want to live. So, I don't know. I just encourage you and urge you to do what it is that you really want to do, and not what society expects of you, you know, not what your degree says you should be doing but what you really want to do. If you can embrace that, <laughs> there's some kids in the neighborhood here. If you can embrace that and really just be yourself, be true to yourself, then, you know, that's what it takes to live like a, a really passionate life. So, coping with change isn't difficult if and only if you can be true to yourself. So, I don't know, that's what I got to say about that, guys. If you have any other uh, strategies for coping with change and dealing with change and actually changing, go ahead and leave them in the comments below. I'll respond, we'll have good discussion, and uh, yeah, until next time, peace.